2021 was not a good year for GPUs. Most of you would agree with that statement, I think. Um, but the reason why we feel that way are the supply issues and the resulting price hikes, making even entry-level GPUs unaffordable for most of us. If you look at it from a purely technological point of view, both NVIDIA's Ampere and AMD's RDNA2 GPUs are actually pretty amazing. NVIDIA offered a good jump in performance for the first time while not raising the MSRP, and AMD finally catched up to NVIDIA in rasterization performance and energy efficiency. It could have been so much better, and maybe it will be. What's up next? How much do we actually know about the upcoming GPUs from NVIDIA and AMD? In this video, I will give an overview on current speculations and explain why I think these next-gen GPUs might surprise us. Both NVIDIA and AMD are already well underway with their upcoming GPU architectures. Although we are most likely still over a year away from their actual release. New architectures are being worked on years in advance. It's a really long term process. That's why we get rumors along the way and the closer we get, the more concrete they become. What we know so far about Nvidia's next gen GPU is that it will most likely be called Lovelace. There was some confusion at first because the codename Hopper also popped up a lot, but that seemed to be the HPC or data center focused design with Lovelace being the gaming design. Most leakers are pretty sure Nvidia will go back to TSMC with Lovelace, at least when it comes to the high-end SKUs. MP was manufactured at Samsung and TSMC offers the superior process nodes. Lovelace will most likely be a monolithic design, maybe the last large monolithic die from NVIDIA ever. Some performance rumors of two times performance of RTX 3090 are out there, but it's way too early for these kind of guesses. There's still a lot of information missing right now. What's interesting to me is how far NVIDIA will push their ray tracing implementation. It might take center stage, not only from a marketing point of view, but also from an engineering and a die space allocation point of view. Another hot topic is how they will manage the memory implementation. Ampere offered 384 bits of memory interface, and it uses very high speed GDDR6X memory, which proved to be a considerable design challenge. The high clock speeds of GDDR6X meant increased signal stability requirements, and as a result, the memory chips had to be brought a lot closer to the GPU die, so the physical distance and the signaling pathways are shorter and everything works properly. GDDR6X also uses quite a lot more memory than traditional, GDDR6 without the X, which in turn increased the power draw and the cooling requirements. A Lovelace-based GPU would need even more memory bandwidth because you need to scale it up with performance, and GDDR7 won't be ready for a launch by then. So how will NVIDIA tackle that challenge? Will we see a larger memory interface and even faster memory? A larger memory interface is really, really cost intensive for the GPU design and the PCB implementation. Personally, I don't think Nvidia will go above the 384 bits that we see with MP right now. I think they'd rather focus on faster memory and maybe take a peek into AMD's playbook and try to reduce the impact of raw memory bandwidth by increasing cache sizes across the GPU. And if you remember back in the day, a year ago, GDDR6X was also a special design by Micron and NVIDIA. So there's a chance that Lovelace might bring another improved memory version. Let's call it GDDR6Y. NVIDIA has to deliver the right amount of bandwidth and that would be another way. My personal speculation is that Lovelace is the same 384 bits 
of memory interface, but with a faster memory and maybe another special design, larger cache sizes, and an increased focus on compression like we saw with Pascal. In my mind, Lovelace is this brute force monster, monolithic die with a focus on ray tracing performance. NVIDIA cannot let AMD close the gap in ray tracing performance too, um, like they did with Raster Performance. I think they will go all out on ray tracing and that's how I would do it. RDNA 3, on the other hand, is a very different beast. All rumors are pointing towards a chiplet-based design, which would be a first in the GPU space. But it makes a lot of sense if you consider how successful AMD has used this approach with their Zen 2 and Zen 3 based CPUs. We talked about it before, a modular approach leads to lower design costs, smaller die size, and overall a more efficient engineering approach. The idea is that you have so-called graphic core dies, GCDs, which is where the compute is happening, just like the CPU chiplets with Zen 2 and Zen 3. A lower power SKU would have a single one of these. A higher end SKU would consist of two or even more. That's the way how you can use the same chips for different products. You just change the amount, just like a Ryzen 7 5800X has one CPU chiplet and a 5900X has two of them. On top of that, it seems like AMD is going to improve on their Infinity Cache approach with design ideas that we just talked about in the Zen 3D video. There will be a dedicated multi-cache die, MCD, just like the L3 cache chiplet that will be used on the next-gen Ryzen CPUs. Now, we don't know yet if there is just one large cache die or if there are many smaller ones, like some current rumors predict, but the bottom line is that AMD will further their modular approach. It makes a lot of sense to produce a chiplet only for cache since it can use a process that's optimized for cache only and in turn it reduces the die size. This plays hand in hand with the memory system. With RDNA 2, AMD introduced their new Infinity Cache for the first time. Even the higher end GPUs like a 6900 XT only use a 256 bit memory interface and only in combination with normal GDDR6 memory, just unlike Nvidia who uses a high memory interface and a higher clocked memory. But AMD uses, in addition to that, a large 128 megabyte cache, which reduces the reliance on the actual memory bandwidth. That's a very smart approach, since you keep the costs and the power draw very low by implementing a smaller memory interface, and you're able to also use lower power memory. On the flip side, you need a lot of cache to counter the reduced memory bandwidth. But when you produce dedicated cache dies that are optimized for cache density, you can really use that to your advantage. There's a pretty decent chance that even a next-gen 7900 XT GPU would still use a 256-bit memory interface and lower clocked GDDR6. Just a large infinity cache. Rumors are talking about up to 512 megabytes. And with the modular approach, AMD will be able to greatly increase the amount of shader units without the constraints of a monolithic approach. If I was AMD, I would definitely go for the performance crown. If it turns out that Lovelace is still a monolithic design using a large interface, ultra fast and power hungry memory, I would try to use this to my advantage. Just like Zen 2 made a jump to 16 cores just because the chiplet design allowed for this implementation. Ray tracing is another story. NVIDIA's dedicated ray tracing hardware is a really tough enemy, but the rasterization performance crown could be a very possible goal for AMD with RDNA 3. Just like Intel, NVIDIA has dominated AMD for quite a few years now. And just like with Zen and Zen 2, RDNA and RDNA 2 made great progress. 
RDNA 3 might just be AMD's Zen 3 moment in the GPU space, where they finally could steal the gaming crown from NVIDIA. If the rumors are true and RDNA 3 uses a moderate chiplet approach with Infinity Fabric and Infinity Cache, while Lovelace is a monolithic design, it's definitely possible. But, and there's always a but, all of these ideas are still rumors and nothing is set in stone yet. Depending on your age, you might remember the NVIDIA G80 versus the ATI R600 battle. Well, it was a battle only during the rumor phase. ATI was supposed to use a true unified DirectX 10 shader approach, while NVIDIA was supposed to still go old school. But then NVIDIA released the 8800 GTX with unified shaders and the rest is history. Always keep that in mind when talking about early rumors like this. In conclusion, I think there is a very good chance that with the next gen GPUs we will see a battle old versus new. A very large monolithic Lovelace chip versus a modular RDNA 3 design. The approach to manufacturing has become a deciding factor over the past few years and the future clearly belongs to smart, efficient and modular designs. But a brute force approach still can pack a punch and you can bet that Nvidia is already working on their chiplet design. But what do you guys think? Will RDNA 3 allow AMD to take the gaming performance ground for the first time in a very long time? Or will NVIDIA brute force their way on top with their large and monolithic ultra-high bandwidth memory designs? Are you worried that the TDP will go out of hand as we've seen with the recent generations? I'd love to read your opinions down in the comment section below and I will see you next time. Bye. Thank you.